So since the Monday Night Football game between the Bengals and Texans was so bad and brutally boring, I actually found myself watching quite a bit of Raw this week. Not by choice, it just happened, and there you go. I guess I did kind of want to see how this company was going to utilize this Go Home Show Before Survivor series to kind of uh, put out the lay of the land and set the table, because I do plan on watching Survivor Series on Sunday. So as I'm watching, I realize that they're going to do a contract signing between Paige and Charlotte to hype up their Divas Championship match Sunday at Survivor Series. And I'm like, I really give a fuck, but I'm like, oh, okay, you mean that's the match you're going to do a contract signing for? You know, contract signings in and of themselves are already played out, and now you're going to incorporate two divas that really aren't particularly good on the microphone. You know, I started to get a little interested, I will admit, from a sadistic standpoint, because I'm like, this has train wreck possibilities written all over it. And then, as we got past hour two and got going into hour number three, I said, oh my god, this thing might actually main event. This might actually close the show. This is their choice their last impression that they're choosing to leave on a lot of fans who know they're not going to fuck watch SmackDown or anything else until Sunday at Survivor Series or not even watch Survivor Series, wait until next Monday on Raw to see what happens. This is the last taste that they're going to leave in people's mouths. And I have to admit, at that point, I've got me drooling a little bit at the possibilities for the suck fest to come. And ultimately, I don't feel like I was disappointed. You know, I will say this, is it takes a lot to offend me. It really, truly does. A lot of shit just rolls off of my back. A lot of shit I just don't really care that much about. It takes a lot to offend me. But what they did with that contract signing segment actually offended me. Not as a human being necessarily, but as a wrestling fan. Now, no, it wasn't because they used Reed Flair's death to try and advance an angle. That's not what I'm offended by, honestly. Because in the grand scheme of things, wrestling has done so many offensive things over the years that that doesn't even really measure up to hella beans, frankly. And furthermore, for all the people that are actually offended by them using Reed Flair's death, this is the same company that once, after Owen Hart plunged to his death at Over the Edge 99, they said, the show must go on! You know, all the other things that this company has done over the years, and that is getting your panties in a bunch, a lot of you being the same people that harken back to the glory days of the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era, and you want some of that back in your wrestling. Do you forget about the times where they did choppy pee-pee? Do you forget about the freaking times that they had uh, freaking Val Venus and Jenna Jameson basically in a live sex scene in a shower? Do we forget about all the other dumb shit they've done like Vince McMahon pretending he's God and creating his own religion? You know, do we forget about these type of things? You know, Katie Vick and uh, Mae Young giving birth to a hand, all this other crap and all the other horrible things that the wrestling business has done in general over the years. You know, DX coming out in blackface and so on and so forth. This is what's gotten so many people so pissy and upset. I mean, come on. You know, it, it just, it astounds me. It's almost like the WWE has desensitized their audience, or sensitized their audience, I should say, so much to the point where anything that could be even classified as borderline risque or borderline edgy or borderline uh, tasteless now becomes offensive and a reason for people to go on a platform like social media and bitch to kingdom fucking come about it. No. What I'm offended by is the laziness and the stupidity of the decision-making of even going there. That's what pisses me off. It's the laziness of sitting there and saying, we're not going to give you a real reason to get interested in Paige and Charlotte. We're not going to give you a real reason to either get behind Charlotte or be against Paige. We're just going to fucking throw this out there at the 11th hour for shock value because we think this is a good way to close this show, a good way to cap off a lame-ass contract signing fucking segment that you've seen millions of damn times before. The laziness of this company Instead of coming up with good writing and good storytelling, going to this type of shit, as a wrestling fan, that offends me. The stupidity of this. Paige and Charlotte, in no way, shape, or form, had reached anywhere near a level where anything close to resembling this being brought up was even necessary or called for. Again, it was just stupid. 
This is just another Divas title feud. It's just like all of the other fucking ones. You could take that Divas re revolution, throw it down your throat, and or shove it up your fucking ass. It's the same old shit. And if you still believe there's anything different about the company, it shows just how fucking stupid you are. But the fact that the WWE thinks that we're that stupid is what really offends me. That instead of giving us good storytelling and good writing, good character development, and giving us a reason, a storyline arc, that actually makes us care about this match, they think that we are so simple-minded and so stupid ourselves that that will be the thing that makes us interested in the angle. That's the thing that will make us want to tune into Sunday. Of all the things you could have done with, since you already had front-loaded the freaking show anyways with Taker and Kane and so on and so forth, this is the way they chose to close out the show. This is what they said to you was the most interesting or compelling thing that they could have to close out their go-home show before Survivor Series. The stupidity of all of this and the fact that the WWE thinks that we're that stupid and the WWE is that fucking lazy, that's what is offensive to me. I don't give a damn if WWE brought it up first or Charlotte brought it up first. If Ric Flair was clued in, it was clued, wasn't clued in. I don't fucking care. Who gives a shit? You know, it was obviously a troubled young man who ultimately made his own grave. It is what it is. You don't like that I said it? Tough shit. You know, it's a reality of the world. It happens. You know, death is utilized on a day-in, day-out basis by the media in order to capitalize and profit. So at the end of the day, is the WWE that much worse off for doing it? No. That's not what offends me. That's not what bothers me. It's the fact that instead of putting forth real effort to make their show better, instead of putting real, for, real effort forth to write better storylines, to write for and develop better characters, and better format their shows, this is the type of lazy, sensationalistic bullshit that they think is all we need in order to be satiated and ultimately be interested in their fucking product. That's what is frustrating to me, and that is what it's offensive to me. I've never seen a company in all my years of life, and even different places I've worked for, what have you, ever, ever have such a low view of its customers and have such an insulting, condescending view of their customers and go so far out of their way to, like, intentionally displease their customers as the WWE does. Some companies end up doing it as a byproduct of stupidity, sheer incompetence, what have you. You see this all the time in corporate America. But the WWE goes a step above and beyond. They are stupid. They are incompetent. Yet at the same point in time, they intentionally set out to piss people off. Not piss people off in a way that actually could generate some revenue by creating some real heat and interest in the product. Just fuck with their fan base. The WWE is the ultimate troll. If you've ever heard anybody on the internet say this is the ultimate troll or that is the ultimate troll, you can take all of them combined, throw them into one section, and the WWE and their trolldom of their own audience, their own fan base, their own fucking customers, they're the biggest trolls of all. And I don't get this because you sit there on the one hand and you try to sit there and talk about how kid and family friendly you are, and yet at the same point in time you do shit like this. What the fuck are you? It's the problem is the WWE doesn't fucking know because they have an identity crisis. They don't know who they are, what they want to be, where the hell they're going, how the hell they're going to get there. And I find it kind of offensive when so many people defend the WWE and this stupidity and this bullshit that is so clear to see, including the people in WWE, because you don't know. No, you apparently don't fucking know. Because to sit there and defend this pathetic crap at this point is exactly what I just said. It's pathetic. I'm tired of this company being this fucking lazy. I'm tired of this company being this fucking stupid and furthermore thinking that we're this fucking stupid, that this is all it takes to please us and this is all we need. I'm fucking sick and tired of this company lacking any internal competitive spirit whatsoever because they clearly don't fucking have it. I'm sick and tired and frankly offended by the lack of personal and professional pride that this company shows and what the hell they're doing. I know if I worked a job and showed this little professional pride and personal pride, I wouldn't be long for the fucking job, and yet WWE consistently does it time after time after time. 
it just shows you ultimately what this company thinks of their audience, thinks of their fan base, thinks of their paying, sometimes non-paying customers. That, at the end of the day, to me, should be the most offensive thing of all to you because, frankly, it's the most offensive thing to me.